Aloha, it's your boy Neglected Gundam, and today we are looking at the Master Grade GM Custom. This custom has been customized more than what was in Stardust Memory, and I call it the Fully Loaded Joey. I hope you weren't too lonely without me since my last video. Now let's get started! Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath Alright, so today we are looking at the Master Grade GM Custom. You will see that it is customized more than the GM Custom from Stardust Memory. A quick history on this suit is that I bought him from Pearl City on Oahu. I have a GM project that I'm working on and there are going to be many GMs in that project. And now a brief history of why I made this one first is when I went back to Maui, I had lived in a spot and I was moving. So I put this guy in the back of my truck. He was still in the box and it was not clipped out. It was still in the runners and all the runners were still in the plastic bags. Well, in the back of my truck, that box opened up. So like two or three of the bags fell out onto the road and these two cars, I swear they swerved into those bags. I saw them in my rearview mirror and those bags exploded under the tires of both those cars. And so I pulled over and I picked up as many pieces as I could, but I realized that the orange runner got run over and that's like all the GM custom specialized armor, which is why you buy the P-Bandai. So I was absolutely devastated at that point and I put it in my closet and forgot about it. And then the pandemic happened in 2020 and I decided, you know what, I'm going to do as much as I can with this project because it's all broken pieces and everything and I have so much time off of work that I'm going to dedicate to customizing my first GM project. And this would force me to customize it because so many pieces were broken. But one thing that I noticed I was missing right off the bat was actually the PC runner. So there was no runner that could hold this guy together. So I actually had to go into my scrap pile of all my leftover pieces from all my other Gundam projects and I had to scratch build a lot of the PC runner because some of them like I just didn't have. So it's pretty awesome that he's even able to stand in front of us today. That's pretty cool. I basically made this guy like he was a custom GM and he went on the battlefield and got completely damaged and so like all the orange pieces like really took a beating and the backpack got destroyed and so I was thinking like what if that Gundam got destroyed and then went back to the shop you know the pilot's still alive but they wanted to rebuild it for the pilot because he's an ace he just got unfortunate in that one time or a couple battles and so I figured I put the dual backpack on because he had so much thrust with the the custom backpack that he had that's why it's kind of ridiculous with two backpacks because he has so much thrust and then on top of that, the knees have like shocks and dampeners and stuff like that to ease his fall and his landing. So I went ahead and made custom armor from the Mark II. And then you'll see with the Mark II pieces on his leg, I didn't do the orange and I didn't do the camouflage. And that's on purpose because I figured they had like the Mark II Titans just laying around. And so they just had spare parts for him. They cut it up. They kind of like devil may care just cut it up real quickly and just fashioned it to his leg and so you can see that it's still like it, it has that shade of blue underneath and even though it's not the original blue from the pieces I went ahead and painted those pieces blue and then I painted the not camouflage but like beige on top of that to kind of replicate the same color as camouflage without them like doing the camouflage and that's supposed to represent like a rushed job but Basically, I just wanted there to be like a backstory in my head of why it looks like that. I wanted it to be like a realistic, like, what if this guy went out, damaged his suit, and then they had to repair it. And it's like a devil may care repair. Just fashion things, get it on there as fast as you can, and get it back out in the field. So that is the theme I was going for with this guy. Now, let me go ahead and explain kind of my process and how I did some of these parts. And also, I'll show off some of his weapons and things like that. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna show off this pilot and he is a no-name pilot. I don't have a name for this guy, but he kinda has the colors of the desert scheme on his suit 
and then for my GM project I want to give everything like a red visor so that's why the GM here has a red visor and that's why the pilot has a red visor however I didn't create a backstory for him but his mobile suit has a name which is fully loaded Joey all right I'm going to show off some of his armor um, on the front there I went ahead and added this beam saber holder there kind of reminds me of like a black ops person or something like that and then on the orange here I went ahead and added some more reinforcements for his armor because as you can see it's kind of like he got punched in the gut and this actually you can see if there's the right lighting you can actually see the pilot inside which is pretty cool the car gave this guy more personality because uh, they ran it over and then this got crushed and I had to literally like glue it back together um, and put it back together but I like to think of it as like a fist came in from like this direction like like a fist came in boom and hit it and just like demolished it and so now like he can pilot it by looking out of the suit directly he doesn't even have to use the main screen which probably got bust up anyways and then more armor uh, more extra armor I put the three holes in there kind of cut down on the weight of it the head I believe is exactly the same and then I just painted the visor red. For the backpack there, um, there was nothing that I could plug this backpack into on the other backpack, so I just had to scratch build that. These pictures here show the three millimeter runner and so how it goes through the backpack there. And so I just had to cut all those holes out and put it in. And I thought that was pretty cool. That was the first time I've ever scratch built to that level. So I thought that was pretty awesome that I was able to do that. And I put the decal in there and scuffed it up because so it's completely flat on both these pieces and boom got the magnet in there so I think that's really cool he can just hold his weapon on his back I like to think of that as like Halo 3 um, to where Chief could put the weapons on his back so that's that weapon and then I did the same with this weapon and you can put them like that or like that. I like to keep I like to keep them at an angle. Um, I just think that's aesthetically more pleasing. So that was the first time I've ever used magnets on kits, and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I went ahead and added the diamond plating here. That was a cool aspect. Um, I'm gonna use more diamond plating in the future with some of my future builds. I just don't know when. And then I just did some scribing and uh, some more holes here. And then I put on some plot plate here just to give it just visually like just more to look at so it's not flat. And this is actually pretty cool because if I put this weapon on, I planned around where this goes. So boom, goes around. And I think I did both sides. Yeah, did that side too. Yep. And I scribed and then put plot plate here just to give it more detail, more surface detail. Uh, gave him some armor on his hands here, kind of like, kind of just like gloves or something like that. Would add more detail. So the back skirts here, this is actually the front skirt from the Master Grade Crossbone Gundam Full Cloth. And I think this is just extra pieces that he had. Uh, this is the front skirt and I said, oh, how cool would that be if it was just the back skirt and it looked awesome like that. Um, and the reason I did that is because this is the only piece I had left over from this kit and there was no skirts because they got like exploded by those cars. So if you look at these pictures here, you'll actually see that from the runner, I went ahead and put the three millimeter pipe in there. And then in order to fit onto this piece here, I had to cut out at specific angles and specific pieces just so that would fit. And then I added the plot plate and drilled holes in it so I could fit that armor on there. I think the side skirting is just the regular side skirting from this kit and I just added armor onto that. And then the front skirts, I'm actually pretty happy. I don't think I had any armor from the front skirt at all. So I didn't have this, I didn't have this, I didn't have this. All the front skirts come from a GM. So just a Master Grade 2.0 GM. And then I went ahead and scribed inside there. And again, I think this was all just by just by eye and hand, I just did the square and then did did all that, and I didn't use any tape or anything. I just did it by freehand. And then, yep, this piece didn't fit in this area because, like I said, it came from a, a GM. 
So I went ahead and cut and added and glued and this, I, I went ahead and sized it um, and cut there and I didn't even have the top piece. I was going to put the top piece, but then once I saw it, I said, that looks kind of cool actually. And it's not over the top. It looks like it could belong there. Uh, it's not crazy. So I went ahead and did that. And then also underneath here, this metal that you see here, I think that's actually from the Perfect Grade Ashtray. And it is the little thing that holds on the front skirt of the ashtray, which I'm not going to use mine, so I took it from the kit itself and used it for this. And then I just glued the front skirt on. Uh, moving on to the legs here, I just went ahead and added some plot plate and some scribing and some holes just to give that surface detail just something to look at there. So if you show your eye, you could see something cool. On the back here, I just did some scribing and some, some holes there. Here, you'll see a gigantic crack in there. It is pretty cool, and I wish I could have said that I, I planned that out, but again, it got ran over by a car. And surprisingly enough, even though this thing like completely disintegrated when it got run over by a car, um, everywhere that pegs into this guy's leg, all the armor was able to fit on perfectly, it, even though there was like these gigantic cracks and even like it broke in half and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I used that as a time as an opportunity just to make it darker around these cracks and put that in. So I thought that was pretty cool. A crack here. I think it really adds to the kit, um, especially since this damage I didn't plan and it just happened to happen to this kit. Um, like this is just completely cracked and it just, luckily everything has somewhere to fit into and onto his inner frame. So I was pretty lucky about that. And then some of my first scratch building I've ever done, like this leg armor. And so I was able to get the three millimeter peg and then just some plot plate and make the vents here. And I was able to get just plot plate and fashion it to where that peg could go inside that hole. So all the armor here has something like that, but the leg underneath is all painted. Uh, basically because this one you could see through the armor gaps so I painted that. Um, this one the inner frame is not painted on the inside just the pistons and stuff if you could see through the gaps when I move the feet at the right angle. But I was pretty happy. I mean it looks pretty ugly. <laughs> it looks ugly but um, I was pretty happy with my first custom armor job like that. I wish that I could have made it more rounded and made it more look like it fit together but I, I couldn't. And then this is from the Mark II as well. Um, there was supposed to be like some armor thing that came here that got lost as well and so I just glued that on. Uh, this actually has a gigantic crack down the armor which is pretty cool, I like that. And then the back armor guard, I think I actually glued these into both sides here because this one is just completely broken all the way through. And then this is from the Perfect Grade Astray as well just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. This is the same part and I just cut it off and, and glued that on top. Um, and then this came down more. I just gave them sharp angles and uh, just made it more aggressive. I took these ammo packs here and then just put, and then just put the magnets in there. So they, they stick on like that. I thought that was so cool. That I have this one here and then I went ahead and put these there, this little plot plate, I put those in there because the ammo pack kind of was like up here. So when this was actually glued in and, and, and in the right spot, it keeps it level like that, which I thought was really cool. But at first thought, I was like, oh man, it might make his legs like stick out too much. It doesn't make him too bulky. It, it's kind of like cargo pants or like cargo shorts. And it's, it's pretty cool because it's just like right there where his hand would be if he needed a refill. And it was like right there, he can grab it really quickly. All right, so these are all the armaments that he has. There are the cannons that I have on his shoulders on the backpack. Um, so I didn't take those off. I can take the backpack off, but I didn't want to. Um, just in case if it is gonna break and I'll show you how it's holding on. Um, I just thought it was unnecessary for me to take that off. But these are gonna be all his armaments here. Of course, you do have the bazooka. And with all of the weapons, I went with this color scheme of the kind of like tan, the brown, 
the green and the red and I wanted all the ammo packs and magazines to be red um, just so that they would stick out a little bit more I kinda went with the uh, the soot on the barrel there like it's been fired quite a few times and what I really like about these weapons here is that I have a kill count for each weapon so this one looks like he's got one two three four five six seven kills with the bazooka and then I do have the ammo pack here the magazine for the bazooka you'll see on this side I went ahead and took off this here and the reason for that is I actually have a magnet in here and this one's broken I have to fix it you can hear the magnet rolling around in there so I actually have to fix that but this actually will attach to his leg and then these things here the same they have magnets as well and then I went ahead and weathered them um, kind of like they just been paint scraped and just old and that was just dry brushing but the same deal with those is that they're on magnets as well and they stick to his left leg and since I showed you that I may as well show you this again the ammo pack this one is not magnetized I didn't want to do that I didn't need to it's on this gun uh, but there is a magnet here in this side and for his beam rifle what does he have he has six kills with the beam rifle and then this is one of the things this is an extra weapon that came with the suit because this was a P Bandai suit. It came with Mark II runners. And so that's why I was able to get the Mark II bazooka. And then this, this is why I was able to get this gun here. And so I painted the, painted the camera there, um, clear red, a little metallic, candy red. But in order to get that on, because they had this bar here that you can see well they didn't have anything that that came and could attach the camera that suit because it was P Bandai didn't come with the runner to actually be able to attach this camera I just put plot plate inside and then I was able to carve out that hole that fits this here and so you just put that on and it will rotate so I thought that was pretty cool. A little fix there to get that to work. And then of course I painted like, you know, the inner frame of the gun and things like that. And I gave it a nice color separation. I thought the tan here and then the brown would be just enough to keep it interesting to look at, but not give it too many colors and not have it be one single color. And then I have here from Anaheim Electronics. This is a custom handheld weapon here. So it has the magazine. Let's see if I can get it out. All right, so I was able to pull this out of the back here. Um, this is what sits inside, and this is the magazine. Again, red is the theme of this kit. Okay, so with this gun, I believe here with the front of this gun, it's supposed to actually have the back here. It should actually be this one that goes in, I believe. I'm not going to put it all the way in but because I might scratch the paint, but if I did, it would come up. And then this one has the magazine that comes down, and it was supposed to go with the front of this gun, but I don't like that because whenever he tries to hold it in his hand, this always hits his forearm. So I customized the gun and I put this back on. And so that's his gun when it's in his forehand, he can uh, he can grip it. It won't hit his forearm and it's nice. And then how many gun how many kills does this gun have? This gun has 4 kills. So like you saw, this is kind of like his his quick um, switch out for his weapons if he wanted to. However, I don't use it like that. I kind of have it as my own weapon. And this actually is supposed to fit where the bazooka fits on his back skirt. This fits into that. So this is supposed to go on his back skirts. Then what I did was I actually took some plot plate 
and made the exact cutout as what he has on his back skirt so that way I could put this on the shield. And so now his shield is a weapon in itself. Since I'm showing off the shield, this is pretty cool. Uh, this has been a little scratched here, you can see, because uh, I put it inside the shield here. But this, if I angle it down and put it in the first one, so there's just enough room for that beam saber to light up inside there and come out. So he actually, when he wants to, he has a beam saber that comes out of the shield too. So that's actually pretty cool. It's kind of a surprise weapon. And then if I ever find a little tiny tow hook, I can glue a little tow hook on there because this is supposed to be, you know, kind of like a, a wench there, a tow hook. So if he wants to grapple onto something and then pull it towards him, he can. That's what this is supposed to be, but I didn't have a little hook and I didn't want to fashion one. So that's kind of my thoughts on that one. Uh, I don't think I have any stars on the shield. The shield doesn't have any kills yet. Uh, or maybe he just forgot to put it on there. But he does have the symbol for Australia on there. And this thing has been beat up. And there's a nice crack in here from when it got run over by the cars. So I left that in. And then I went ahead and put plot plate on. And things like that. Like they, uh, they riveted on this extra protection for him. And then, so we have the beam pistol here. And this is actually pretty cool. It had a handle, but I didn't want him to ever have to hold it in his hand, so I cut the handle off and put the shield holder and fashioned it to the beam pistol. This thing has one kill. And then last but not least, for the weapons that I have on the table here, we have the beam saber, and he keeps that up in his chest like a navy seal or something like that and then for the last of his weapons is on the mark II backpack i went ahead and put the beam sabers and i know on the mark II the beam sabers actually go reverse and they kind of like face the backpack and he takes them off and they're beam sabers but i figured how cool would it be for these to be like cannons like a gun cannon and so i don't think of them as beam sabers i think of them as like small beam cannons and he can like kind of point these at you and just shoot them at you. So that's my inspiration for that. And it's cool too because it like frames his face, which is really cool. And then you can also pick him up. So pretty cool stuff there. And the reason that this one is a different color is kind of like he has his paint job scheme for his weapons and also the backpack. Well, I would like to think that he got this backpack um, a little bit later so they wanted to go back to the as much thrust as he had with the gm custom so they gave him this backpack and they painted it like a cool mint and i like that cool mint because it kind of breaks up like i i think that if i did both backpacks in the same color it would kind of get lost and there'd be just too much green everywhere so i said you know what i want a green but i want it to be cool mint to where it's just a secondary green color so for the camouflage paint job, this is actually the first camouflage paint job I've ever done. I've never attempted it before, I've never tried it before, so I said, you know, I gotta go on the internet and I found, I found a nice desert camouflage that I wanted to recreate. But what I really liked about that camouflage was that it had like the white specks with the black around it and it kind of looked like rocks or something like that. And I said, that would be so cool to do that. It's, it's the reason why I chose that camouflage. I just thought it was the coolest. And so if you look at these pictures here, you'll see I gave this guy a white base coat, but then you'll see all the blue dots and stuff like the greenish blue dots. And that's just like the masking sole. Then I went ahead and put the brown color on the first color. And then I masked that with just like sticky tack and pressed it into the suit. Um, you can see where all all of it on the edges are crimped and stuff and, and put pushed into the suit. But then I just built up the colors one by one and you can see these pictures of how I did it. Um, it was very time consuming. And fortunately, I had enough forethought to think about the suit um, when it was completely together and where the colors kind of went in together. Um, so I went ahead and put all the armor on as much inner frame as I could 
and then just painted on top of the inner frame itself, which got painted. And then I had to just like clear that paint off and, and paint it again its own color. Around the white, I went ahead and put the black. So I just took a Gundam marker and then just kind of like went around all the white pieces. And I tell you what, once I did that, it just made it look so much more professional and so much more complete. There was a lot to talk about with this guy, so I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, I know that I'll be watching it in the future, and I'll probably say, oh man, I can't believe I didn't say this, I didn't say that. <laughs> but, you know, it's what happens with these videos. Um, I'm pretty happy. I I'm ecstatic with how this guy came out. I love him. He's one of my favorite suits that I've made. I love GMs. I like suits that are the main suits in the title of animes and, and like the Gundam shows. I love them. But honestly, what I love more than that is GMs. GMs are my favorite because they're just customized. Like, a good grunt suit, you know, like, of course you can get, like, an angsty teenager that just kills everyone and, and doesn't die. And he's in, like, this armored, just over-armored tank of a Gundam. And he just, like, kills everyone. Like, locks on to, like, 35 people at once and just shoots them all, you know, Kira. <laughs> um, but, you know, the GMs are, like... If you look at, like, Norris, or you look at Rambo Rawl, and it's like, dude, these guys are just out here surviving. And they took their grunt suit and just did this extraordinary thing with it. I just, I, I would look up to those pilots more than, like, the protagonist in the series. Because he's just kind of forced there. He's, he doesn't want to be there. He's a teenager, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, if you look at the GM pilots, um, it's going to be, like, just a guy on the battlefield. But I, I know that Rambo Rawl and, like, um, Norris is not piloting GMs, but those are just the caliber of the pilots that I'm talking about. Like, Lieutenant Burning. Like, you want a GM pilot, let's look at Lieutenant Burning. Like, he has a team. He's he's an ace in himself, you know? It's like, he's just good. What I'm trying to say is that I love GMs because it, you take a pilot on the battlefield, and he's like, just, that's the suit that he has. And so he has survived. And so if he has survived long enough and he's taken down enough enemy suits, he eventually gets experience, he gets enough experience, he becomes an ace, and then people start treating him like, hey, how do you want this thing customized? You know, like, we're going to actually give you something good. So I just love the customization for GMs and the fact that you don't have anything that's holding you to a certain suit, like a protagonist suit in a series. Everyone knows what it is. They expect it to look like that. However, if you do customize it, that is cool. But I just love the customization aspects of GMs. I love this suit. And I hope you guys enjoyed the talk story on this guy. I hope it gave you some inspiration. Uh, maybe you want to try a camouflage paint job. All I have to say about that is find yourself some reference pictures. Find yourself one that you really like and it calls out to you. I just wish you guys the best of luck with your builds out there. Um, if you do have builds, if, if you have Instagram, share it with me. I'd like to see some of your builds. So with that, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you like this content and you want to go ahead and see more work that I do, you will see more work that I have done in the past, and you will see the work that I'm currently working on at the moment. So go ahead, like this content, comment about it, and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I hope you don't feel that neglected now.